Well, Darren, there there really haven't been many setbacks so far this season. So when it comes to Shrewsbury tomorrow, I guess you have to think really long and hard about if you're going to make changes, what changes you might want to make, or yeah, whether you want to do anything significant at all. Yeah, I mean, look, you've got to make sure that when you don't panic and start changing everything, because that would be the wrong thing to do. Uh, but you've got to analyse the game, not just not just um, Saturday's game, but uh, one or two things I'm seeing in the you know last couple of games that I have to take into consideration. Um, and it's very rare, you, you know, you have a game like Saturday where I think they had three shots on target and score four goals. And the game, you know, after 28 minutes, my goalkeeper's not had a save to make. They started strong. The first 10 minutes, they were strong. I have to say, when, when, when we scored, I felt we got an element of, of control in the game, but not enough for my liking. But listen, the, the nature of the goals are, are very disappointing. Um, and three out of the four of them, uh, they're very avoidable. Yeah, because from the outside looking in, of course, the statistics, just two defeats since the opening week of the season, it's been going very, very well. But from what you're saying there, of course, you have to look at the performances or elements of the performances from recent games as well. Yeah, I think you've got to, you know, look at where we're doing well and where we're not and try and continue doing the things that you're doing well and try and change the things that you're not doing so well. So part of my job is obviously to to assess that and, and look at the the game coming up in isolation and how we can start improving things that we're not doing so well. Certainly conceding goals, but conceding goals as a team, I have to say, not just as a back five. And that would be wrong for for me to even suggest that. Um, there has been some individual errors, but we, we score and concede as a team. It's not a case of we want the front three to score goals and do nothing else. They, there has to be the, the collective throughout the whole team. And, and on Saturday, we didn't have that. There was too many gaps. Um, and I didn't. I was a lot about the performance that we need to improve on, and the players have been showing that this morning. And then we move quickly onto the game on Tuesday, and it's going to be another tough game. Yeah, there's an element of I guess staying calm under pressure in that you got yourself back in the game at three all, and I think you said in your post match interview you're thinking, well, we can we can kick on from here, but then if you go and concede so quickly afterwards you just lose that initiative well yeah I mean obviously when you're 3-2 behind and we've made substitutions that are having a little bit of an impact um, they're not holding on but it's natural for a team that are defending our one goal lead to, to go a little bit deeper to then go 3 all at that point you're thinking well don't lose the game you know by doing anything stupid there is a possibility you think we can go and win it but when when decisions are made like the fourth goal, there was so so many things wrong with it that it's 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 hard to to explain in many ways. It was just so bad the goal we lost. It was from our own corner and very very poor. Yeah, and I suppose as we've said in previous weeks, you've got that interesting balancing act in that some of the players who've been on the fringes will be thinking after a game like Saturday, well maybe this is my chance to, to come in and shine and you've got to get that balance spot on. Yeah, no, you're absolutely correct and you know it, there is a, a good squad we've put together um, so obviously I've got to take that into consideration as well and listen, for any game I try and pick the right team, the right formation, the right players to, to go and win a game of football, that's never going to change, certainly not going to change for tomorrow. Um, but Clearly, there's areas we need to improve on, and one of those is, is a standout one: is to stop conceding so many goals, in particular away from home. Yeah, and I know you said on on Saturday that you don't want to be in a situation where you're relying too heavily on the front three to go and do the business and and leave it at that. But equally, very heartening to see, even in a trickier performance, that once again they're delivering the goods. Yeah, and I didn't think, and they know that themselves, and I honestly didn't think we'd. I thought Butler did fine, apart from the initial part. I thought Butler was good, came in, set a goal up, but I thought he actually dealt with Feeney after the first 10 minutes. After that, I don't think we had many performances. I've got to be honest. I think you would, that's the right way of analysing the game. Individually, you would say most of the players were way off it. And when you have that, you're in, in trouble of, of losing the game. Of course, you get the magic from Mo, a great finish from Ivan, a very good penalty from Marcus. Um, but in the whole scheme of things, the performances went were much like the rest of the team were, were, were below average. There's no doubt about that. With the with the team selection, with Fraser dropping out of the squad, was mm-hmm. that purely tactical, or has he got a, a bit of a knock? No, no, there's no no injury. I just felt that again, 
a lot of the boys taken on. I feel Botts has been ready to go back in, and I was I was delighted for him that he he, he gave I thought a decent performance. Um, and Fraser, from where he's come from, you know, I need to just take him out now and again, put him back in, because it's very hard for the boy to to play so many games in such a quick space of time. Regardless of how he's playing, it had no. It, the, the decision I made was had no bearing on the fact that I took him off against Coventry. I have to make that clear. That wasn't the case. It was a tactical decision taking him off against Coventry. I think I explained that one. And whether he had played really, really well in that game or not, he would have come out because he needs to have a breather mentally and physically. Yeah, we've seen this with the players when they come from a, a lower level before. It, it's virtually impossible to keep to those standards week in, week out, isn't it? When you're making such a, a big step up, that's a, a really big ask. Yeah, I think I've been quite consistent in, in doing that with younger players. Um, and I think it's important that most of the stuff I do has got a consistency about it in terms of uh, how we work and how we, we go about our, our job day to day. And obviously, when it comes to a game on a, on a Saturday or a Tuesday, we have to get to certain standards. Clearly, we were below them on Saturday. And I've said it many times, what we had four defeats now, that the games we've lost, we've deserved to lose because we haven't played well enough. And sometimes, you know, you can go through it as much as you want. That is clearly what happened on Saturday. The players were off as a collective. And of course, talking about potentially making changes for mm. tomorrow night, you've done that within games anyway. And in the case of, say, Coventry the other day, quite early on. So you've got some different ideas there that actually we've we've seen in quite large parts of games. Yes, there's always changes because the players are aware of different formations. I, I find it a bit frustrating that I'm having to do it too many times. Um, what I set out with the players to do in formations should work. I shouldn't have to change it. They know that. Um, and clearly there's one or two things that are not we're not doing well enough at the moment to allow it to work um, on a tactical basis our formation against theirs on Saturday we should cause that all sorts of problems like we have against it before but we didn't and the reasons behind that are we're not getting enough control of the game and it leaves too many gaps in the team so these are things we have to address and these are things that after every game I've got to look at it and think right where do we need to improve Clearly we're scoring goals and look, the front three, the amount of goals we've scored is quite incredible actually. And I think we've scored more than any team in the league between the three of them, which is, you can't take that away. That's a fantastic stat, but I still think they can give us more. Yeah, so when it comes to sort of getting the solution, if you like, for tomorrow night and moving forward, you have to work out whether you want to maybe trust the same group of players to do what they should be doing to a higher level or whether it's appropriate to maybe do something different right from the, the kickoff. Well, no, I can't, I, I, I can't just have blinkers on and say, I'm doing that. And I, well, you can, but I, I, I think that I've got to be, have flexibility in what I do, which we do in terms of look, uh, looking at things. If, if it's a one-off and you think, well, that's not happened before, so, but it's clearly it's not. We've, we've conceded three at Wickham, we conceded four on Saturday. You know, we are conceding too many goals as a team. That's that's clear. In terms of Shrewsbury, what do you make of, of them as a team? Very well organised. Have a very specific way of playing. They have done all season with a back three. Tweaked it a little bit ahead of that. Um, very, very tight in terms of how many goals they've conceded. Um, so, listen, it's, it's an away game. It'll be a tough match. Uh, they're, a, they're a decent team. So, um, it's going to be another hard game. And when it comes to the knocks and the niggles, all okay? Touch wood. Everyone's fine. Um, no different to how we were on Saturday. Cool. That's great.